Okay, the problem is a car drives around a banked circular track, there's no friction, and the question is how fast can this car go without skidding or slipping? This is a car driving in a circle on a track that is banked inward. There's no friction. If the car drives too fast, it'll skid up the bank, and if it's driving too slowly, it will slide down the bank. So the question is, at precisely what speed can this car drive around this track without skidding. The process by which this problem is solved is fairly straightforward, so it's a good example of uh, an approach for problems that uh, appear a little bit more complex than this one. What really interests me about this question is the answer. Uh, which is uh, design velocity equal to the square root of gravity times radius times, in this case, the tangent of uh, the banking angle. I've done a couple of videos on centripetal acceleration and uh, design speed, and all of them involve problems that have an answer of a velocity equal to the square root of gravity times radius times something tan theta in this case. But the uh, consistency of the square root of gravity times radius being part of the answer is something that I find kind of interesting, which is why I'm doing these videos. So the process by which this question is answered is to sketch the problem, create a free body diagram, and write algebraic expressions representing the some of the forces along the vertical and radial axes. This sketch is intended to illustrate the problem. The road is banked at some banking angle called theta. Uh, there's no friction, so the only forces in effect are gravity going straight down and the normal force of the road surface on the car pointing up, but at an angle that does not directly oppose gravity. This free body diagram is intended to illustrate the major forces in effect along uh, the vertical and radial axis. And you'll notice that acceleration is uh, pointing along the positive x-axis and tending to represent the radial direction. And this is because a lot of my physics professors have often advised me when creating a free body diagram, whenever possible, represent velocity or acceleration along the positive x-axis. It's not essential to do that, but um, if it is adopted as kind of a problem-solving process, it will often make it easier to answer questions like this. <clears throat> so the, if the car is traveling around this track at the design speed, uh, it's not going to be moving or accelerating vertically, so the sum of the forces in the vertical direction should add up to zero. The forces in the vertical direction are mass times gravity pointing down, opposed by the y component of the normal force, which is the normal force times the cosine of the banking angle theta. <clears throat> so the sum of the forces on the car in the y direction Sum to mass times acceleration, which, since this is uniform circular motion, sum to mass times the velocity squared divided by radius. The force is sum to zero, and those forces are the y component of the normal force opposed by mass times gravity. The y component of the normal force is the normal force times the cosine of theta. So the normal force times the cosine of the banking angle is equal to an opposite of mass times gravity. And dividing both sides of this expression by the cosine of theta, theta allows creating an independent and discrete representation of the normal force being equal to mass times gravity times the cosine of theta. The car is accelerating in the radial direction. The acceleration is pointing towards the sum of towards the center of the circle. The only force pointing towards the center of the circle is the x, uh, radial component 
of the normal force, which is the normal force times the sine of the banking angle. So the normal force times the sine of the banking angle is equal to mass times radial acceleration. And we, it was previously proven that the normal force is equal to mg divided by cosine theta. So take this expression and substitute it in for uh, the normal force, and the result is mass times gravity times the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta being equal to mass times radial acceleration. Mass exists on both sides of the expression, so it can be canceled out, leaving gravity times sine over cosine of the banking angle being equal to velocity squared over r. This is radial acceleration. Sine over cosine is tangent, so gravity times tangent of theta is equal to velocity squared divided by radius. And by dividing both sides by radius and taking the square root of both sides of the uh, equation results in a uh, velocity value being equal to the square root of gravity times radius times the tangent of theta. So take a closer look at this expression and think about the banking angle for uh, a minute. <clears throat> the steeper the banking angle, the larger the value of tan theta is going to be, meaning that the larger uh, the value of the result of this expression. That kind of makes sense. A steeper banking angle will allow uh, the car to travel faster. Think a little bit more about um, the possible values of the tangent of theta. If the banking angle is zero or the road surface is flat, the re result of this expression is uh, equal to zero. The tangent of zero degrees is equal to zero. So the velocity, if the banking angle is zero, uh, would be equal to zero. So that makes sense. This track has no friction on it, so if it is perfectly flat, the car is not going to be able to travel at all in, in a circle without the benefit of friction allowing it to drive in a circle. Now this line is intended to loosely represent the graph of tangent of uh, an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. The tangent of 0 is 0. The tangent of 45 degrees is 1. So at a banking angle of about 45 degrees, the design speed would simply be the square root of gravity times radius. <clears throat> the closer an angle gets to 90 degrees, the larger the value of theta. Um, but this graph is asymptotic. Um, there is no um, real value representing the tangent of 90 degrees. It uh, approaches but never reaches uh, infinity. And that makes a little bit of sense. If the banking angle is 90 degrees, the car is going to have to travel uh, at some very great speed in order to um, uh, not slip down the side of the banking angle. But since there's no friction, no amount of velocity will allow the car to drive um, basically on the inside of a, uh, a cylinder. So this answer, this solution, this problem would not apply if the banking angle were 90 degrees. There would have to be friction. Um, and it wouldn't apply if the banking angle were zero. There would have to be friction to allow the car to travel in a circle. So the solution to this problem of how fast a car can go around a banked circular track um, is a velocity equal to the square root of gravity times radius times the tangent to the banking angle. But the solution only applies if the banking angle is greater than zero degrees and less than 90 degrees. In an earlier video, I um, solved this problem for a flat surface with no banking angle, but it assumed friction. And in another video, I've um, done a solution to this problem if 
the banking angle is 90 degrees, meaning essentially that the car is driving on the inside of the cylinder, um, which also requires friction. Both of those solutions involve a velocity equal to the square root of gravity times radius times uh, some other coefficient value. So if a car drives around a bank circular track and there's no friction and the banking angle is greater than zero degrees and less than 90 degrees, uh, the car can move at a velocity equal to the square root of gravity times radius times the tangent of the banking angle. I found this problem interesting, which is why I made this video. I hope it is helpful to you if you've got questions.